Okay, I'm going to try my best to explain the trombone model for a replication of DNA in E. coli. Um, I can't guarantee this will be the best, but I'm going to try to do it to <laughs> help people understand. So basically, if we were to just focus on um, part A for now, um, you would see that uh, the three prime to five prime blue strand right here um, is the parent strand. And this five prime to three prime red strand is the, uh, the part that will be synthesized. Um, and so let's say that, um, okay, so this purple um, uh, protein right here, this is the helicase. Um, and that will uh, unwind the DNA, right? Like the parent strands. So the helicase, let's say the helicase starts over here, then it will go this way and unwind the DNA. And so that's why you see the replication fork um, right here. Oops, right there. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Um, yeah, right here. This is a replication fork. Um, and so as it unwinds left to right, you can see this parent strand coming apart from this other parent strand. So what you need to realize is that for the synthesis of the leading strand, the parent strand will be this blue one, which is in this case three prime to five prime. And for the lagging strand synthesis, the parent strand will be this um, three prime to five prime red strand. And so let's focus on leading strand first. So like I said, as helicase goes from left to right, it unwinds and this DNA polymerase, let's say it's starting here and as helicase unwinds, it will synthesize this red, um, red strand over here. Right, and so continuing on from here, the SSBs will drop off <clears throat> and keep synthesizing this way as it unwinds. Um, yeah, so that's why leading strand is continuous synthesis because there's nothing stopping it from going five prime to three prime. And something to remember, um, DNA synthesis is always five prime to three prime because uh, DNA bases can only add um, when there's a free three prime OH um, that can form a phosphodiester bond with a five prime triphosphate on a new um, DNA base. Um, and that will release pyrophosphate. Um, yeah, so leading strand is pretty straightforward. So everything is going this way essentially. But then the complicated part about trombone, uh, the trombone model is that in E. coli, um, we want the two DNA polymerases to be replicating the, the two strands um, in coordination with each other. And so we want them to go like essentially in the same direction, whereby in like eukaryotic um, DNA replication, um, we saw that it didn't have to do this loop. And so it was like kind of opposite. But yeah, so when we focus on the lagging strand, um, again, this red strand here will be the parent strand for lagging strand. And as it goes this way, so helicase will unwind um, this way, like I said before, right? And so as it goes that way, this red strand will feed into, um, let me draw an arrow. Oops. This red strand will feed into this DNA polymerase side, right? Like it'll go in here. So this loop here, this red parent strand is single stranded as it unwinds and it will start um, to form this little loop that is similar to a trombone slide. And that's why this is called a trombone model. And initially, um, as it unwinds, we have the SSBs on the single stranded um, parts to prevent it from like tangling and all of that um, and to uh, prevent any like re-ligating and stuff like that. Um, and so we also have this primosome over here that will help us 
put this RNA primer onto the single stranded um, parent strand because in order for synthesis to occur, we need an RNA primer, which um, technically there should have been a RNA primer on the leading strand as well at the very beginning, but we don't see it here. Um, but yeah, so the primosome will insert an RNA primer. And so now, so RNA primer is the green part right here. Um, so now that we have this RNA primer, the DNA polymerase can start adding um, DNA nucleotides onto, um, onto this strand. And so starting right here, uh, again, DNA synthesis is 5 prime to 3 prime. So focusing on this blue strand, that's the part being synthesized. And so this blue strand starts um, 5 prime to 3 prime and keeps going on um, this way. And so as it's synthesizing more and more DNA 5 prime to 3 prime, this loop will keep getting bigger, right? Because you're making it longer. Um, and eventually, um, it will hit this old RNA primer. Um, this old RNA primer is from the old um, Okazaki, Okazaki fragment um, that was previously synthesized. Um, so this used to be in the loop. Okay, so once it hits this old RNA primer, it's going to stop synthesizing, and then um, the whole uh, DNA um, polymerase, so the DNA polymerase is going to hit this RNA primer. It's going to let go of the new Okazaki fragment that's right here that's being formed. And so we move to um, figure B. So now this new completed Okazaki fragment will be let go, right? And the primosome will have already made a new RNA primer. And that is where the DNA polymerase jumps to. And it will start this process of making the trombone loop again. And so that's what we see right here. It loops back. So you see, now we have this new loop again. Um, and it will redo that whole synthesis. So once there's a primer, we can go five prime to three prime and start synthesizing and then let go once it hits this. And so this completed Okazaki fragment will be like over here where it says old Okazaki fragment. So um, I hope that helps. Um, yeah, and if you wanna know what happens after replication is um, you have RNAs that will remove the RNA primers um, and then you can uh, use the DNA ligase to seal the NIC and you're good to go. You've fully synthesized or replicated DNA in E. coli. Um, so I hope that helped um, all of you. And as you see here, it says, it talks about the DNA ligase 